Hello, and welcome to the second GM report video in this series. If you don't know what this is about, then I would suggest you have a look at the playlist in the description. There is an announcement video and it's, it's all there. Uh, this video, by the way, is uploaded on my second channel, the live streamed actual play games, where we actually play the game, is on the main channel, the live stream archives. So, uh, I'm assuming that you've now gone back and watched the announcement video or something like that, so that you actually know what this is about. Um, if not, that's fine. So, got some notes. The first note is, and this is about the second session of the game, obviously. This, the first note is about revising a ruling. So, uh, in the first session, I made a ruling about how the purify food and drink spell works. Namely that it uh, gets rid of the alcohol in alcoholic beverages or something, because alcohol is a poison. Like, it, it, it is a toxin, it, it's a poison. And so the spell would do that. However, um, Willis, one of my players, approached me and said that this isn't really how he thinks the spell should work, and he's not really happy with that. And so I did some research online, what other people had to say about that, and found that it is actually quite a, a contested topic. And so I decided to revise my ruling and say that it works how the player intends, because the character knows well, the character would only cast the spell to do the thing that he wants it to do, therefore... Yeah, basically, I made that ruling. And I got thinking about revising rules in general and that sort of thing... Well, rulings in general and that sort of thing. And I remembered... One second. Just need to grab my paper. There we go. I remembered that... That's actually quite an important part of GMing, which is that it's easy to feel as though, as GM, all of your rulings and all of your judgment has to be perfect. But it doesn't. Uh, one second. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect, because if it would all have to be perfect, then it wouldn't be a lot of fun to play. You would just constantly feel the pressure and the maybe even anxiety of thinking about, uh, well, if I say this now, if I make this ruling now, if I make this decision, then we'll have to stick with that forever and it has to be perfect. And if it doesn't work, then, then I'm just going to have to make up something more so that it does work and all that. And that wouldn't be fun at all. Um, yeah, when I first started GMing, I was... I did have that belief that um, if I said something, if I made this ruling this way, then that would be set in stone. Even if it was just in the moment something I just didn't really think too much about, I just said, okay, this is how it works, now that has to be how that works. And uh, it led to issues. And actually that was a belief of mine for quite a long time GMing. But at one point, I realized that it doesn't have to be that way. And since then, I found that GMing is, uh, well, a lot more fun than it already was, but it was a lot more fun and a lot more free. Because especially when a player approaches you about an issue like that, uh, just take it seriously and just think, okay, we're all sitting around a table together. We're all trying to have fun playing this game. And so why not maybe change it? Now, I don't mean that you should always change your rulings, but I do mean that you should consider it and take that consideration seriously. It'll improve your games a lot if, if you don't already do this. Um, if you do already do this, then great. You're doing it better than I did for a long time. Um, 
Okay, the next thing is uh, about the recap, because uh, usually in my games I make the players do the recap, because that if, if a player is taking notes, a player knows what's going on, then that is good to uh, have an opportunity to kind of show that off, like, uh, yeah, I was paying attention, I've got notes, now see, I know what's going on. And if your players generally don't really know what's going on, then it's a good opportunity for them to realize that. And of course, you can help uh, remind players about what happened or fill in details or whatever. But I, find, I found that it is good for the players to do the recap generally. But with the live stream game, I think, uh, yeah, I'm going to do the recap because it's faster. And with the live streams, we don't have that much time to begin with. Uh, the next bit is when Arkin spent those five gold pieces just for a little bit of information. That was so much money. And I, well, Mr. W didn't really realize how much money that was, but the money was already gone when he spent it. So I decided that that generosity is going to buy the party a lot of stuff, just a lot of extra stuff. So for example, like the little sparkly uh, gem vial, that's totally not glitter. Um, or a good meal per day, so per day of resting instead of just a little bite to eat as breakfast. Or the fact that the barkeeper um, uh, kept the scale, car, scale guard busy as they left, or that sort of thing. Um, because I don't want my player to feel as though he's thrown the money out the window. I want, it, I want the player to get value for that money because, well, that just feels better than, than having lost money for something that would have been cheap. Um, not to say that you always should allow your players to just throw money at everything and it works always because that should be a given that that, that doesn't or shouldn't work. Um, right, the next thing is about the actual gems. Actually, maybe I should go down there. That looks nice, that be, because this is the same path that I walked on last time for my last report. And there's a path down there that looks nice. So maybe I can find a way down there. Yeah, I think we're going to go down there. Um, so, yeah, about the gems. I, in my description of the gems, I said it's kind of amethysty, and there are little, little flecks, little bits of stuff in there that... Uh, the that the group doesn't know what it is, and that was a hint that the gems are from outer space, because they are from the asteroid that crashed there, that's being uh, excavated and mined for gems. So just a little bit of a hint, not enough to actually tell the players that, but something that might they might recall later on, something that I might be able to reinforce later and say, oh yeah, you look at this gem and it kind of looks like this gem, only there's a little bit more other stuff in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, the next th thing is about Sorum, which is that Sorum is just an innocent halfling with just a typical D&D starter quest that's totally non-suspicious and it's working. And I'm quite happy that it's working like that. Um, so yeah, that's good. Um, oh right, the next thing is about when uh, Sorum was describing his fictional brother, Pral. I decided to give him a blue velvet outfit. Because I didn't think about this before. But if he is working, if he's supposedly working... Uh, with the council, for the council, then it would make sense that his official attire would be similar to the actual councillor's attire, but not quite the same. Because with the councillors, of course, it's maroon red with gold trimming and that sort of thing. So for the ones who are a little bit lower down, it's blue instead. Uh, okay, speed of the game. Uh, yeah, the game is going a lot slower than what I had intended. Oh, look at that. 
That is very nice. I did not expect to see that here. Huh. Oh, oh, you want to see what I'm... Okay, one second. I'm, I'm going to quickly restart this as uh, using the different camera, but you'll be able to see what I'm looking at. Yeah, so I was looking up there. And that all looks beautiful already. But if you look down further, look at all of this growing here. All of these mushrooms. It's a summer's day, it's like 25 degrees Celsius. Even though, yes, I know it's technically still spring, but look at all of this growing here already. Even under there. See, there's so much back there. Huh. Interesting. Well, back to the commentary. Yeah, so the game is going a lot slower than what I had planned because with the game length, the campaign length of uh, eight sessions, a quarter of that's already gone, and the players have literally just had the first conversation with the first NPC to get them started on the plot. So there are two ways that I could deal with this. Actually, let's have a look down there because that looks nice. Two ways I could deal with this. The first way is to redesign the plot so that the characters' backstories and all that gets resolved using the using the actually this looks lovely there. Some ponds come. Uh, yeah. Gets resolved using the direction the players are going in already. And it's maybe a bit more local to the area, which I mean, part of that is good, involving the players in the resolution, like the, the player's direction in the resolution of the plot is of course always good, and I'm going to do that anyway, but condensing it at all and making all of the things solvable where the players are kind of means that they don't get to experience any of the world building that I have already done or would continue to do and it would kind of cheat the players out of a lot of interesting stuff, and myself as well. And so, of course, the viewers as well, you. The other option is to extend the campaign length, which I think is what we're going to have to do. Actually, let's go that way. I haven't gone that way before. Actually, not, not, not in video anyway. So, I think that's probably what's going to have to happen. Um, which means that it's going to be longer for the players to be able to watch these videos, which isn't ideal because, well, for various reasons, some of which are obvious to you, others you would not know, I do want the players to actually see these videos. But uh, I think the game should come first. But we'll see. Um, the next thing is the scale, all oh right, the scale guard in the tavern. So the players were being quite open and loud about potentially making a jailbreak or crime scenes, that sort of thing. And so uh, I decided to have a scale guard just walk in because there was a warning that they do sometimes go into these establishments. And so kind of the three ways that I saw that this could maybe end this, the, the well, two ways, really. First is that the scene gets uh, sped up a bit and the party actually leave the tavern and go somewhere else and do stuff because that scene was... I was, lo I was looking at the clock and for a stream that scene was uh, not dragging on because that implies that it wasn't fun. And it was fun. It was great roleplay. I enjoyed it a lot. But in the time frame of the stream, it was getting quite long. And so either the scale guard coming in makes the players leave, which it has, or if they continue to discuss things here and continue the conversation normally, then the scale guard would find them suspicious and would kick them out of the town. Um, in which case, Sodom would be there 
to lead them on to the plot. Um, so yeah, that was good. Plus it meant that there was another thing for that were, uh, Mr. W's gold was useful for. Um, okay, I've got two more points. First point is the importance of repeating descriptions, repeating details. Uh, because as GM, of course, you should have a good idea of what your world looks like. But for the players, it's, I know at least well, when I was a player, it can be easy to forget important details or just, just world building details if you don't repeat them. So for example, the main street having the channel dug along it with the crystal plates on top and the second road running underneath is a thing that I've repeated a few times, which uh, I've done for this exact reason. Now you can of course go overboard with it and just bore your players, but I think a bit of repetition with explanations or descriptions is good. Oh, this is such a lovely spot. Ah, I wish there were more spots like this around where I live. But within walking distance, it's really only a handful. Although I do like these a lot. So yeah, reporting details can be important. Uh, next thing is, obviously the party didn't go the way that I had intended for them to go. Namely, to go with Sorum to Vale Rift to follow the plot there. The party instead decided to probably help Mima first, or at least to investigate uh, that. And so I had to come up with a bit of the layout and some of the details of the House of Harmony uh, on the spot which was fun for me. Is the thing is that from a player's point of view, it shouldn't feel different. What, you've, what you're just making up on the spot and what you're referencing from uh, your notes should feel the same. Now, of course, if it doesn't, if you need a bit more time to uh, make things up on the spot, that's fine. But ideally, there shouldn't be a difference. And so I've tried, even though, even though I had to come up with everything on the spot, I tried to put in details which kind of make it feel like it was pre-prepared. So for example, the, uh, the fact that there are gardens and flowering uh, plants around and that there are uh, cannons looking out to the sea and all that sort of thing to give that impression uh, because being a GM even if you're not even if you're not live streaming is part performance uh, for your players it doesn't have to be if that's not how if that's not what you're comfortable with or if you're a new GM or you just like playing it differently that's fine as long as you're having fun but for me it's part performance so uh, yeah, but that was fun. I really did enjoy that because those kind of moments when things don't go how I planned is what makes GMing fun. Uh, well, what makes it really fun because of course having the players find the stuff that I have prepared and seeing their reactions to it as they're exploring it and interacting with it, that's great, but it's not very exciting. The exciting bit is when you're unprepared and when you've got to make it up on the fly, which happened there. So uh, yeah, that's all my notes. So with that, thank you all very much for watching this video. Again, the, the series is split into the videos, which is the preparation and the reporting, which is on this second channel, which is what you're currently watching and the live streams, the actual play, is left on Twitch and then archived on the main channel. In the playlist, everything's all together, so for ease of access. Uh, so 
I'll see you for the next preparation video, which should be exciting. So until then, bye-bye.